children today i am going to take your history as well as civics class let me first take your history class in history i am going to explain about the later vedic society in later vedic society the topic is position of women that means how was the position of women in the society during the later vedic period the position of women began to deteriorate and they were not allowed to read vedic literature they were thought to be inferior to men their main duty was to look after the husband and children polygamy was prevalent among the princes the upper class and the rich however it was not prevalent custom among the common people the birth of a son was preferred to that of a daughter women could not own or inherit property caste system during the later vedic period the caste system became rigid and hereditary once birth became important and not merit because they were learned the brahmins occupied a high esteem position in society they alone could perform the rituals and sacrifices it could it could be only the select few amongst the brahmins who could advise the king the common people held them high in esteem next came the khatriyas or the warrior class the chieftain and the king came from this caste they were the privileged class as they did not pay taxes the vaishyas consisted of the traders and artisans they paid all the taxes these three castes were considered the upper caste and were entitled to wear the sacred thread the sudras were the lowest caste and served the upper classes as the caste system became rigid and hereditary they suffered many injustices each caste had its own code of law and marriage outside the caste was for forbidden religious life the form of worship that we see among the hindus today has its roots in the later vedic period new gods be began to be worshiped prajapati of brahma the creator was the supreme god vishnu the preserver protected uh, protected the people while shiva was the destroyer community sacrifices were performed in which the rural and the whole community participated the correct performance of the innumerable rituals brought the brahmins to the forefront people came, became superstitious and believed that their welfare depended on perfect performance of rituals and yajnas elaborate rituals were performed at the birth of a child his threat ceremony or upanayana at his marriage and at his death cows horses gold and cloth were given to the brahmins as gifts as the brahmins officiated between god and man their power and influence in society increased the later vedic period uh, vedic people believed in karma or doing one's duty and its transmigration of the soul the belief that when the body dies the soul or atma discard the old body and migrates into a new form the man's position in this life was determined by his action in his previous life Men would thus continue to reborn until he attained moksha and became free from the cycle of birth and rebirth. The Aryans also believed in dharma or the right way of living, as stated in the Dharma Shastra. Towards the end of Vedic period, there was a strong reaction against these beliefs and superstition. Many people spoke against the practice of sacrifices and elaborate rituals, as well as the dominations of the Brahmins. It was during the time during 1600 BC that the Upanishads were compiled they were focused on the importance of right belief and knowledge and the relationship between the soul atman and the supreme being brahma the gurukul system of education Aryans followed the gurukul system of education a student of brahmachari lived in the household of the guru in the ashrama and served him by doing various household tasks in return the guru imparted knowledge guru shishya or the people teacher relationship was considered very sacred education consists of vedic literature both religious and secular it was transmitted orally from teacher to people education was free and open to the higher caste but not to the sudras the rich people offered guru dakshinas after the education and with this i am ending my today's history class let me start your civics chapter 2 the preamble of the constitution before starting let me tell you that in my previous class i have given you the answers of question number 1 2 5 and now today i am going to give you the answers of question number 6 to 10 question 6 the constitution of india stands for a secular state what does secularism mean answer secularism refers to a country that has no religion of its own all citizens are free to practice preach and profess any religion of their choice there is no state religion no government office makes any discrimination on the basis of religion 
Question 7. What is the opposite of a secular state? Name one state that is not secular. The opposite of a secular state is a theocratic state built upon a particular religious dogma. The state of Pakistan is an Islamic republic. Question 8. Mention any two features illustrating the nature of Indian polity or state. Answer. India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. Its two features illustrating the nature of Indian polity or state are Number 1. Sovereign. India is a sovereign state and she is internally and externally free, free to frame socio-economic policies and develop resources and externally free from any control by a foreign state and can freely frame foreign policies and choose allies in peace or peace and war alike. Number two, democracy. The constitution proclaims India to be a democratic republic. Democracy is a system of government in which people choose their rulers by voting for them. Question nine, mention any two of the main objects or ideals of the Indian Republic as set forth in the preamble to the constitution. Answer, the two main objects or ideals of the Indian Republic as set forth in the preamble to the constitution are justice, liberty, equality and fraternity, equality of status and opportunity. Equality secured is equality before the law, social equality and equality of opportunities in matters of public employment. Number two, fraternity, dignity of the individual and the unity of the nation. Fraternity is another name for a spirit of brotherhood. It aims at removing the evils of communalism, untouchability and anti-social feelings from our community. Question 10. Mention what the preamble says about equality. Answer. The preamble of the constitution states that all individuals are equal and the state shall not discriminate between people on the basis of caste, creed, race, religion, gender or wealth. And with this, I am ending my today's class. Goodbye.